Believe it or not, that's actually something that we've had a client experience before where someone was coming in, unplugging something or disconnecting equipment and things were going down. And it took us quite a while to kind of figure out what was happening based on where that was at. So what we're gonna show you here is a little bit of a failover demo of what it looks like to fail from one firebox to another uh, and how your traffic continues to flow through that process. So if we take a look, what we've got running here is a ping to an outside uh, IP address and we've got a ping to the gateway or the fire cluster itself. Uh, we're just gonna play a, a video here, uh, kind of move that forward so it's not necessarily fully cached. And so we've got something happening in the background, content that your user would see. We've got a ping to the gateway and then pass the gateway to something outside. And so what we'll simulate in this case is I'm gonna pull the cable here for our internet connection and simulating a failure there or this appliance going down for some reason, this appliance isn't active or working anymore and we'll see what happens. So we pull this here, that simulates a failure of the internet connection. What we're expecting to see here is a couple of dropped pings on the outside interface and possibly one to two on the inside interface here uh, as it fails over. So as you can see right there, we have fully failed over. We've got uh, one dropped ping as it transitioned from this box to the other. And we've got a couple, uh, two to three there on the outside. Uh, the content in the background is continued playing. You've got a little bit of a cache and then obviously that carried you forward. Uh, you wouldn't really notice too much of anything here. If you're on a phone call with that UTP traffic, you might notice uh, a little bit of a, just a blip, uh, kind of like you had bad reception. And so that's it, we filled over, everything's still active. This box is uh, essentially offline at this point. And so we'll give this a little bit for the cluster to sort itself out and make sure that uh, the other node on the top here, hiding underneath, is our primary. And so once we see that of everything, what we'll do here is we'll plug this back in and we'll take a look and we should see both of these will become active uh, or capable again to be used as the primary unit. And so we'll give this a little, uh, just a little bit of time to recognize that it's uh, high availability failover is still here. It's still uh, something that can be failed over to. And what we'll do then is we'll fail back from the top unit by simulating the same test and fail back over to this other one and we'll see the same thing in reverse. Looks like we've got active here and everything's good to go. So we'll do the same test in reverse. We'll pop out the internet connection here on this side. And what we should see is a very similar concept. Uh, our video is still playing here in the background and we've got a couple pings here on the top that are dropping. We'll expect to see the same thing in reverse. There's our one drop as it fails over. Uh, internally, and there our connection is back up on the outside interface uh, to something beyond the fire cluster, and we're back over to the other unit being the primary. So we filled over and we filled back uh, from that standpoint. So there's a bunch of health checks that happen here. Uh, it could be a hardware failure, so something in this unit dies, a network interface, um, some of the storage that's on the inside, a power supply, anything like that. Uh, or one of these physical connections. So we've got something disconnected here, whether that's the heartbeat between the two units, whether that's the outside connection, whether that is the connection to downstream and the rest of your LAN, uh, any one of those can be health uh, checks that you're looking for. And when one of those fails, that simulates a fail or uh, institutes and, and kicks off a failover. From that standpoint as well, if you had to do maintenance or something and you had something that was wrong with this one or you needed to change cabling or something downstream of this device, you can also manually uh, in the cloud interface fail that over and trigger a failover from one to the other in either direction for whatever you need to to get things moving. So I'm going to plug this back in here so that everything's back up to full capacity and then you're all set uh, from that standpoint to handle uh, hardware failure, connection failure, uh, anything downstream of this um, and everything stays online for you. Up next, we'll take a look at a scale infrastructure. So your server infrastructure, your virtual machines, and the physical hardware that runs all of your server workload. And we'll look at the same type of thing. We'll simulate a failover of one of those pieces of hardware dying. That could be, again, a failover from a, an event that happens, bad RAM or something like that. Or again, maintenance. You need to work on a power supply. You need to re-cable re something. You can take a single node down. So we'll go take a look at that now. We'll look at both a live failure of a system as well as then a live migration in order to do planned maintenance for an environment. So if we take a look here, uh, we have a Windows endpoint that's up here and we'll start a video inside of here uh, that's going to start playing. And then we'll take this machine here and we'll simply migrate it over from one node to another. So if we 
select this machine here, we can choose which other node. I'm going to move it over to node one. And you'll see here, this process starts running uh, right here and lets, lets you know that everything's in motion. Video and everything's still playing in the background. And this will migrate over and kick that workload over seamlessly to the second node or the first node rather. Uh, in this case, it's an endpoint, but this would represent your, your server workload. So you can see here now it's on the other node. Uh, the endpoint didn't even notice anything. Video still playing. Connectivity still all there for everything. We didn't lose connectivity from the council side. And so everything seamlessly filled over. It's just finalizing that RAM portion. And you can see now everything is all complete. All right. On this next one here, we're going to take a look at what would happen to simulate a failure. So a node goes down. Uh, you have a bad stick of RAM, power failure, some sort of other hardware failure. Uh, all the way up to including an entire motherboard failure. So we'll take a look here. We'll have the same machine that's running on node one, and then we'll go ahead and uh, simulate a failure. Uh, we're just gonna disconnect this system and we'll watch as this workload fails over from one to the other. So we'll get this video going here of this one, just so you see that there's some movement and stuff happening in the background. And then we'll go ahead and watch as node one goes offline here and loses all its network connectivity. And so we'll, it'll take this workload and automatically go ahead and fail it over here uh, in just a second and restart that from a high availability aspect. So it'll keep it running and bring it back up online on one of the other additional nodes. Oh, and joys of a live demo, I realized that I am on the node that um, we took offline. So I'm going to hit node 11, uh, the secondary one here. And we'll sign back in. Now you'll see here I lost my connectivity to this one. Um, and this one, the cluster now is in a critical state. And our redundancy is degraded. And then this machine should move back over right away over to a, another machine. Line here once it starts, and then I've also reconnected this uh, additional node, so we should should see this come back online here as well, and go from a critical state back to a healthy state. Um, so see here, this one automatically failed over here to the third node, so everything's all set. It's powering back on. You can see that this first one shows as offline, and then once that connects back up, uh, it will do its health checks and bring this back into a healthy state. Um, so it's coming back up now here. You can see that the, as the no node rejoins the cluster, uh, it's jumping back in and it'll come back online. All of our health checks will clear and it'll let us know it's back in a healthy state. So we'll give it just a second here to finish those checks. And then we'll have the node back in the cluster. That would simulate, uh, in this case, either completing your maintenance task or if there were, uh, was an actual hardware failure, you replaced a stick of RAM, uh, you replaced a, a failed power supplies or reconnected to a failed UPS or things like that. Uh, this would be the state then as you get everything back online that would be fully functional uh, and have your full redundancy across the entire cluster again. Uh, and there you have it. So we're back online here. You sh this one doesn't show offline anymore. It shows that it's free and shows everything's all set. We can even uh, finalize that by taking this and if we wanted to force the virtual machine that we were working on here back over to that other node, uh, it will start running on that one again and uh, it's able to carry a workload and everything is fully functional. So with this finished migrating here over to that node. Everything moved over, this machine's still fully functional, and you're all set.